This is the Really Big Broadcast with Tom Drake, legendary comedy magician, John Farentino, the producer, Dottie Colossa. I'm BJ Odom, the voice of Best at Sea Radio. And joining us on this magical Thursday from Las Vegas will be producer and magician, Connie Boyd. We never had anybody on uh, who was a female magician, so we're yes. excited that you're here. Not only that, someone courageous enough to want to handle other magicians. To want to represent them, which, <laughs> which is a joy. So, so uh, I mean, this is all I know about Connie from back in the days. Connie, when I first met her, was an assistant to a juggler, Wally Eastwood, who's billed as the fastest juggler in the world. Yeah. And when I had met her, she had just gotten casts off her ankles for falling off a trapeze. Uh-huh. And then I heard later on, and there's probably steps in between, that you were performing as a magician. Right. No, and no. You, yeah, and you had a magician, and now I hear that, you know, you're handling female magicians. Right. Um, uh, as you know, I was an aerialist. Well, I actually started um, as a ballet dancer. I trained with the National Ballet of Canada on scholarship. And huh. then I developed tendonitis and did an audition for a circus and ended up getting the job. And I, uh, it was a one ring circus. And uh, I did perch pull and hand balancing. I had no idea what I was doing, um, but I went uh, to, the le- to the audition and then went and learned how to do perch pull. And it was a, oh, I don't know, 20 foot pole, a man balanced on his head. And I would climb up and press a handstand and hang by my heels and do these crazy things. And I was naive enough to believe if you told me I could do something, I'd do it. <laughs> And so um, I, I did manage to learn those two acts and I performed those acts. And then um, I, that's where I met Wally and he and I, uh, he did the juggling. I assisted him in the juggling and learned how to juggle. And I also had um, a big attraction to single trapeze. And so I looked, I worked really hard and I learned a single trapeze act. So we were billed in circuses um, all over the world uh, with the juggling act and the single trapeze act. And um, I would, fly to my trapeze um, by a method called iron jaw. And that's where you grip a mouthpiece in the back of your, with basically with your jaw and you fly up, which allows your neck and your arms to be free. So I flew up like a butterfly and then I would grab the trapeze and drop my wings and off I'd go. And uh, unfortunately I'd had a new mouthpiece made and we were at the Astrodome and the rigging broke during the show. So I was flying up swinging and at the back of the swing, the rigging broke my mouthpiece and I dropped onto my pointed feet, boom, (laughs) onto uh, cement and I broke both feet. And so I was Mm -hmm. extremely fortunate. If you do have to break your feet in public, um, it's a good place at the, uh, to be in Houston because they had fabulous uh, orthopedic surgeons. And um, I had an orthopedic surgeon that dealt with the football teams and he put my feet back together and he was fascinated with the break because it's an almost impossible, uh, I, I broke six bones, but one was serious. The other were just in the toes and not so they could heal uh, relatively without any problem. But the one on the top of the arch was pretty serious. And so uh, he operated on it and he was excited. It, apparently I'm in some medical journal because it's so unusual to break this um, bone. And then my arch collapsed and they said, oh, you'll limp for the rest of your life. And you know you won't be able to dance. And I said, well, send me to physiotherapy. And so I started a pretty stressful regime of physiotherapy and um, I, I recovered my collapsed arch and um, I was able to dance. And about the time I think I met you, John, uh, the casts were off and I was still like I was uh, I would do the shows and ice my feet and do my right. physio. And um, and I've had remarkable recovery. Nobody ever, you know, that's 100 years ago. That's 30 plus years ago. Right. Uh, and then I always joke that's when I changed from aerial to magic. But the truth is I, we were working in a hotel at the Riviera in a show called Splash at the Riviera in Las Vegas. Yeah, it was great, very interesting show to watch for its time. It was very exciting. And there was a magician named Barkley Shaw. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Barkley Shaw, but he was a puppeteer, famous puppeteer, and also performed magic. And he did the most beautiful levitation. I'd, I'd never seen anything like it. And I really wasn't familiar with magic at all, except this gorgeous levitation he did very close to the audience. And, um, and the woman floated and she was gorgeous. And then he placed her in a, ca- a, a crystal casket and, um, and she floated inside this casket and it was just 
this breathtaking piece of art. And so I would watch it every night because I just was mesmerized. And he saw me watching it and said, you know, if you like magic that much, you should think to be a magician. And that was sort of the catalyst to um, his manager then said, oh, I could book a magician, you know, if you learned magic. And I jumped in the deep end and had a terrible start, <laughs> but, um, and a lot of financial loss. And then quickly re understood that I had to take responsibility for myself and for my actions and to learn um, magic correctly. And so uh, coming well, uh, did, not to interrupt you, what kind of magic did you, were you doing then? I started with illusions. Right. Yeah, I started with illusions because he did illusions. And um, that was uh, other than, of course, I had seen, you know, Lance Burton was in Vegas. I'd seen Lance Burton. I'd seen that type of stage magic. But it was the illusions, again, coming from the theater, coming from, you know, a da dance background. That was really attractive to me. Just And that particular levitation was just so ethereal and graceful. And, you know, it just inspired me so much. <laughs> so, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm still stuck on... I put this thing in my mouth and I just go swinging. My arms <laughs> hang free. My whole body's limp. I I just look. I'm just still figuring that out. And yeah. then I'm sitting there thinking, when you got into magic, don't tell me that you put together an illusion where you put a thing in your mouth and it lifted you up. You didn't, you didn't do a thing in your mouth levitation or anything, did you? No, but I used those aerial skills and I did an upside down straight jacket escape over a bed of nails. There you go. I had to use it. I had the of course, you, of, course you, yeah. of course you did. I love I love and then ended up with eating a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stopped, I drew the line at that. <laughs> These were real nails and oh. <laughs> we were so ambitious. We did this on a cruise ship, which was because the, yeah, my, the reason I really thought that um, this would be a success is it packs flat, but it reads big. So, I mean, we did have to travel with a bed of nails, but I'm literally, you know, you're in the air, so you don't have giant props. Not, not carry it. <laughs> I've worked on some cruise ships where I had to sleep on a bed of nails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honey, I hope, the, I hope the bed of nails were, they were packed. They were uh, not carry on. I can imagine. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think with the TSA now with a bed of nails in your suitcase, that wouldn't work out. Really good. No, I mean, it's so much has changed just in the last 10 years um, as far as cruise ship industry and what you're allowed to do and travel. And yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. You know, the, the changes are, oh, are yeah. very dramatic. So you got into, ma into magic. And, uh, and when did you start on ships? Um, well, I actually, I, I did everything in reverse. Um, I was based out of Las Vegas, and I actually debuted my magic show, my first performance at the Riviera Hotel, uh, which most mm. people don't start there. You know, that's yeah. something you, you work towards. And so um, from there, I worked... You your uh, very first performance? Pardon? My very first, yes. Um, I never felt in the beginning worthy of being a magician because I was a novelty and a lot of positions were given to me in the beginning that maybe other people that had worked much harder um, and probably merited it didn't have that opportunity. But I really, really tried my very best and continue to try my very best to, to um, uh, be worthy of the opportunities I've been given. Yeah, I had no idea. I still have, it's the amount, the number of magicians that there are in the United States, there, there are in the world, uh, it's, it's quite a large, fraternity and they are very serious about what they do you know uh Connie, do you know how many females there are in the magic industry we are a minority um there we are less than five percent i believe because i've never worked in 32 years at sea i've never worked right. with a female magician I, when I started at sea it was interesting um uh I, I started at sea nobody really um had seen a female magician before but again that's why in the beginning in the eight, late 80s all through the 90s i worked internationally and in vegas atlantic city tahoe because it was such a novelty to be a female magician and also to have credibility you know you had to mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to be performing um technical strong magic and you know along the way um there's a famous magician named shimada who is a japanese magician and he taught me my doves uh, when I was in Vegas. So I had oh. like access to the best in the world. I'm sorry. I, you know, I was really just, fortunate. You just said it again. He told me my doves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got tired. Of, I got, I was starting to get a little afraid of heights. So I got a dove act. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and John will tell you, I, I don't think he, I think he was too intelligent to do this, but like traveling with ducks and doves and rabbits internationally, it, now it's almost impossible. Yeah. Um, after the bird flu, it became an impossibility. But even before that, I mean, they had passports and entry permits. And, you know, you just, 
when you start this, um, however you start, and I think um, now I've, I'll, I'll go in a little bit about this new project I'm working on and the magicians that are female that I'm working with and um, things have dramatically changed. But when you start, you're not aware what you're doing. You just, I just dove in the deep end and started dog paddling and, and worked really hard and, uh, and had these fabulous opportunities, but also experiences. Um, but yeah, traveling with animals was, I wouldn't recommend it. But I do have um, uh, the magic teaser here. Okay. Uh, and uh, so hopefully, fingers crossed that, that that'll that'll work whenever you're ready. Young money, money, money. I may look innocent, don't underestimate me. I'm gold and platinum, don't you know I'm out of your league? Step back, your time is up. Sit down, I'm taking the lead. I'm a baby. Won the cup Came to see a young queen In the flesh What's up what All up? I hate and you was doing Got the Barbie popping Now all of them Want to be a Barbie I'm watching But you never gonna stop me Never gonna top me Millions on millions They never gonna dock me I am the prototype The pink print and no I don't want no frauds Wink wink I ain't no dumb I ain't no stupid Now, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Come on, you can do it. We need subscribers to obtain more privileges with YouTube. So please, please hit that notifications bell. Spread the word and comment. We love to hear from you.